Hey, this is Troy Taylor with the Championship Football Coaches Clinic podcast. Back for season two, episode one. We got Cody Alexander from matchquarters.com coming on today. And I always ask Cody, what have you been studying? So today he's going to update us since the last time he came on and did the best, you know, presentational Bill Belichick's defense that's ever been done. So, Cody, thank you for coming on. Thank you to our sponsors, Reps uh, Virtual Reality, First Down Playbook, Rack Coach, Top Hopper, Sideline Design, Sports Workbook, Tip uh, tip the Spear, y'all the best. So, Cody, what you been studying? How you been doing? Yeah, I've been doing great. Uh, just nerding out on football. This is actually a good time to talk about it because I know a lot of people's seasons are either over or they're about to be over or everybody's kind of – kind of looking in at uh, what's coming up, what's clinics. I know um, I'll probably have out after the national championship, I'll have out my uh, last year. One of the biggest things I did was uh, who to study, kind of taking the analytics data, who had good defenses, what are they running, kind of doing that. So this is kind of a, a primer for that as we get headed into the off season. Yeah. So do you want me to go ahead and share your screen? Yeah, that's fine. We can, And then okay. we can just start talking about the topics. Um, yeah, let's get it, man. Yeah, so uh, I think targeted coverages. So just real, real briefly, what uh, targeted coverages really are is, um, and this is something that I would definitely do if I was coaching uh, again, especially if you are in a quarters-based system. Uh, and this is what the Fangio system does that I think is unique in that people are starting to steal from them. Uh, it's funny when I started doing all this Fangio stuff in the off season. Uh, this past off season, um, a lot of these old heads were hitting me up like, Hey man, you know, this is just Dom capers and, and Dick LeBeau stuff from back in the day. And, uh, I actually, it all spar uh, sparked a conversation with, uh, Jim Mora at UConn. And I actually got to go up there and visit him. And I got to uh, meet John Pagano, uh, Chuck Pagano's brother and who had worked mm -hmm. with Angio with, uh, the Broncos. And so getting to talk to them about how this was created in the late eighties and in, in new Orleans with, uh, Coach Morris' father and on that staff and all the that staff was absolutely loaded. Um, but then coming back and then be so learning that and then coming back full circle to where we are today, where he's using it as targeted coverages. I think where he aligns, uh, I think with a lot of people, whether you are a Rip Liz guy, because I know there's like two camps of football right now, a lot of times, and it's I'm a I'm a Rip Liz guy. Um, or I am a, I am a, a, a quarters guy. But this meshes both of those families together. And so what Fangio talks about is he talks about like coverage rotation, but he does it within the scheme of where are we going to rotate the cover two side of things. So he will run uh, targeted coverages, meaning we are targeting either the nickel or or we are targeting an actual receiver. I think most people are aware of like one double. I think one double is popular. People kind of understand we're going to run cover one, but instead of putting our post safety in the post, we're actually going to lean on their best receiver. I think we've all probably gotten in a game plan and we're like, if we just stop this one receiver, I'm not worried about the other guys, but if we can stop this kid, then maybe we can win the game. What he's doing is I don't want to play man-to-man -man coverage. I want to play zone coverage. And so the coverage rotation is actually that cover two side. And he calls it Zeus. And so Zeus is just kind of like uh, where is a star receiver? So you can see you can see in here I've got um, I've got the the star receiver in an actual star. So here we are going to, hey, we're going to run the cover two side to him over here and he's the outside receiver and what that does is it allows you to play zone but you are gaining a double on that best receiver so the corner here is going to play what's called a squat technique which is like a soft cover two so he's actually going to carry any vertical he'll rally to any flat defender and then you can play most of us know tricks as poach or solo and so now you're playing your quarters 
but you're getting that cover too. You're getting, you're able to maybe even put hands on the receiver. You're able to get the coverage rotation to this side. Uh, and so now your safety can work to the midpoint. Um, yes, obviously, like if you run a fade out or something like that, that, that they can get the corner to buy down on that. But again, if they are targeting a primary receiver, this allows you to create a coverage triangle over top of that receiver. Whereas before you were playing man free and you were kind of, you were manned up everywhere else. And so here you can see, this is probably uh, the one that most people, if they run cone or some sort of a bracket concept over the X, this they they're already uh, basically have their foot in the door for this. So now we're going to play squat over the X. We're going to run quarters to the field and whatever quarters you do run. I mean, there's a, there's a several different variations. You can have the real zone heavy quarters. You can play it more like the Narduzzi uh, man mad quarters where it's really just man. Uh, the nickel's going to trigger on anything uh, run action, the safety takes number two out or the nickel takes whichever way you do it, you can play this, but you're going to get that squat cover two over top of the X. It allows you to get a guy up. You still have your, uh, your cloud force and your, and your linebacker. What I think it does too, is your linebacker now is just a wall two player in that. Now where he will do it differently. And, th and this is something that you can either decide as a staff or you can do differently is that, uh, typically camp rules, that doesn't mean all the time, but camp rules, if the star receiver's in the slot, they're going to play quarters. So you can play all of your um, all of your cover seven variations out of that. So like you could play your switch, you could play bracket, you could play, um, you could play just regular quarters over top of them and it doesn't really change. And then anytime they get four open, that is really the only time Fangio will play a true quarters concept he calls that quads um so i think like i think about okay how could i have been a better coach what are different things that i could have done when i was when i was coaching this would be something that if you're a quarters based system if you're already letting the kids kind of check what coverages they are this is an easy way of putting in or even updating your cover six because i know a lot of people are still playing uh quarter quarter halves and this is an, a great way of updating it so when you're seeing nfl data and you're seeing cover six what they're talking about really now is not the old school quarter quarter half but really these targeted coverages within zone um, i know the ravens do this uh, the michigan at the at the uh, college level is doing this um, and i think that this is going to be something that that is is going to be reevaluated by a lot of things. I always like to talk about things that one that that kind of translate to all levels because let's be honest, like if you have an alien playing for you, uh, then you don't really there's there's certain, you just gotta let them play, right? But what happens if I you know how can I watch the NFL or how can I watch college and I can be able to pull that back down to what I'm doing? These are some things that are easy that you probably already have within your system uh, that you could easily put in. So this is something, this targeted coverage, I think is really clever uh, and it's really unique, especially if you're looking to play from a too high base. Yeah. And he's with the dolphins now, isn't he? Yes. Yes. I, I went to the Redskin, uh, the commander's game and I got to see them play defense and Terry McLaurin, he only had, I maybe two touches the entire game. And it was just impressive to watch them. Yeah. And I think it takes the pressure off of playing man. Um, mm -hmm. I think when I, I and, and two, like there are, I think at the college level, especially uh, you see a lot of press corners, you see a lot of bracket coverages. Um, and so you're really in kind of in more of that man match world, meaning that once we make a switch, I mean, I've got that guy no matter where he goes. A lot of times the corners are locked in. So what are some things that like when I when I want to bring something down to me? Hey, maybe we can't play a lot of man. Maybe, hey, I lost. A, we're losing two really good corners. Uh, we're going to be young next year. Uh, we're going to be more of a zone team. Well, this is something that you can easily do, um, I think, in, in something that gives you kind of in that zone world where you're not necessarily always leaning on man to um, defend a top receiver. Right on. Yeah, so the next thing I think is the – and I've been watching this, and I, I really wanted to learn this um, 
this off season. And so I, I kind of wrote about it in my, in my last book, the hybrid four, two, five. Um, I kind of put in a, just kind of a, a really rudimentary page on it, uh, kind of a, a diagram on it. And then I was like, I've got to really learn this. This is something that I think is going to be very interesting. Um, and in fact, I, we, there was kind of a viral clip of Nick Saban um, after the SEC championship, him talking about how, well, we wanted to run our mint package they got in, they started doing a bunch of formation into the boundary, which be, what ended up happening with that is that our Jack linebacker, who happens to Dallas Turner, who happens to be probably a potential first round draft pick edge, one of the best pass rushers in the country, was now playing coverage. And it goes back to like if you watch the NFL, like you'll see um, everyone, like especially in the Fangio system, you'll see like a Nick Chubb out there. Uh, defending a slot receiver in zone and it, it's kind of awkward and you're like why are you wasting that guy that guy should be that guy should be rushing the passer so what he quickly did was he switched to he switched to a four down front uh and it kind of you know anytime you get a lot of fib and you're getting a lot of cross motion action the easy way the easy adjustment like if you want to hit the easy button is to go to a four two five playing split field coverage the the issue with that is well what if i'm an odd front base what if i'm a tight front base what if I all of my odd fits, you know, I have I have just put in a lot of time capital into the odd front. The problem with the odd front now is that it's so ingrained in every ecosystem at every level that a lot of offensive coordinators have kind of figured out the rules and they figured it out and they have a whole system in place where if you go odd front, this is the this is the package that we're going to start running. So what teams have started also understanding at the higher levels. Um, and I think it, it, with the as more kids play seven on seven, as passing becomes more a part of the game at the lower levels, quarterback play at every level has kind of risen. Even your average quarterbacks would be really, really good quarterbacks 10, 20 years ago just because the passing game is such on the front porch for a lot of programs. So a lot of things that we understand analytically is that a pass is a more efficient play than a run. Now that does not mean, especially at the high school level that you need to abandon the run. That's not what that means. What that means is a five yard run is a five yard run, but a five yard pass could be a 50 yard touchdown. And so I think that's where people, there's a misunderstanding. It's not the, what a couple of years ago, everybody was arguing about, you know, Oh, running backs don't matter. Uh, you know, get rid of right. We should pass every down. Like, no, that's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is just the overall efficiency of the pass is much higher. Passing on early downs is more important than it's ever been. Winning first down wins you third down and vice versa for defenses. Winning first down wins you on third down. And so how can you run a volume of calls I want to be an odd front team. We're going to dabble in uh, in a four man structure or I'm a four two five team. How can I bring I like some of these odd odd front systems, especially if we're seeing a lot of Y off, uh, you know, zone, basically the NCAA offense. So what a lot of these teams like Georgia, Alabama, Oregon, obviously. So all the saving guys are doing this, all the Aranda guys. So Auburn with Ron Roberts, you see this at, at Baylor with Aranda, um, Patrick Tony, when he was at Florida, I know Austin Armstrong of Florida is kind of doing the same thing. Uh, all of this stuff was even when they were at, were when they were at Lu Louisiana um, and, and in the NFL, I think that this has been really a big part of the ecosystem there just because that you can there's only 32 teams you can find interior defensive linemen that can really reset the line of scrimmage you've also in recent years been talking a lot of d-line coaches talking about resetting the line of scrimmage you know really pushing back those uh those offensive linemen first then i'm reacting to where the ball is going a lot of these lag fronts and, and you know all lag means is like a knockback fallback i'm going to knock back the the person in front of me and then i'm going to fall off on whichever so if he's zoning to my right i'm going to fall off on the left so how can we now marry both of these i know a four down front has solid edges and i have edge rushers when they pass the ball but how can i get these odd front these odd front fits how can i close the b gaps because isn't that the greatest that's the great problem with the 425 and why everybody kind of moved to the odd front uh, especially these tight mint packages was I got to close these B gaps because the nickel position on defense 
and the B gaps in the the B gaps in the box. Those are your fulcrums. And what does that mean? That means that that's where the defense is leveraged and how you leverage those two positions. So how am I leveraging the B gaps? How am I leveraging my nickel? That's where the offense is going to attack. Because again, you are your job as an offensive coordinator is to create space for your players and then attack that space that is created by what the defense is doing. The defense's job is to constrain space, eliminate space, and make it hard on the offense. So what are reduction fronts? All they are is giving the illusion of a four down front, but we are going to close the B gaps post snap and we are going to get into our tight front fits. Tight front is a to C fits. So here you can see, and I just named them. Uh, I just do this for cataloging purposes. You can literally into like, you can literally call these whatever you want. Um, I know that certain, uh, certain defenses call them by um, maybe like movie characters or Marvel characters. You can do them by NFL teams. I just use baseball teams. So in angels, we're going to call the strength away from the nickel. So we're always going to be in an under front in regards to the passing strength. And so then from there, we're going to reduce away from the running back. So if we get the running back over here, so this is a typical slant alignment. This is where the heavy technique is going to be. If the running back is strong, so now we have a stacked alignment, we're just going to run a read pop. Now, why, you know, how can we do this? Again, these are really good against zone schemes. So where does the center usually go in his own scheme? He goes away from the running back. So in this, in a slant, he would be going to his to the defense's left, knowing that we're probably getting some sort of, of split zone action. So as he goes to the left, we reduce this. That So we, what we're doing is we're building a natural wall here, and then we're clogging everything, making everything go into the A-gap. As a high school coach, where do most high school running backs – absolutely not want to run the ball in the a gap most of them want our speedsters right they want to bounce everything outside so we're inviting it and if it he wants to bounce it all the way outside i have a mic backer and a nickel who's right there ready to collect them and so all we're doing i call them reduction fronts because we're just reducing a side there, uh, you can call them a friction front because that's what we're doing. We're calling friction there. It's not a stunt. So this is not a rip tag. This is not a I am going to J step and get vertical. I'm closing the B gap. No, if we end up if they end up with a down block here, he's just going to press that hip and get vertical. So we just want to no matter what we do, we want to close that B gap. So his first he's going to be in a heavy five. So his first alignment is going to be the step to get. I call it a face technique. I want to step and get and and I like visual cues for the kids so I call it a face technique because I want to step to the face of the tackle I want to try and get to the face of the tackle if he keeps going then I'm just going to press him into that b gap and close that thing down um braves so I'm going to call a strength call to the back so now we're going to set the three technique to the back uh any kind of online tight end supersedes the the, the running back so then we would just call we would just call that to that the reduction is away from the strength call so again we're reducing to the b gap bubble i'm not doing anything complex but what i am doing is i'm changing where i put the three technique every time and for my kids they it's just targeted right oh it's away from the nickel so okay well we got the the nickels to my left so i get a right right call okay this one's uh to the back I, then now all i got to do is identify the back but this is the same reduction as this in my d like i'm not teaching anything new i'm just setting the front we're all we're doing is closing the b gap bubble but to the offense okay well they're setting the front every time away from the nickel here Maybe we put the back here. Okay. But then the next time they set the three technique to the back, but then when we moved the back, they didn't, you know, now it's a cross. So it, what I'm trying to say is you are giving the illusion of complexity to an offense, but yet they have no idea how you're setting the front. And the way that it reacts a lot of times would be if you ran a regular G front, which a lot of four, two, five teams already run is a G front with a heavy five technique. So you're not, you're not doing anything different where you can start getting really interesting with it is like if you start running what I call a deuce front or a heads front. There's not a lot of difference from a three technique and a two eye versus two twos. 
unless you can, unless you have the end zone film and you're watching it, you're not necessarily going to be able to tell a heavy three technique and a heavy two eye from a G front. Again, going back to how a lot of these, how a lot of these four two five teams are playing right now is there's not a lot of difference. Those guards aren't going to really be able to tell whether you're in a three or a two or whether you're a two eye or a two. So what you're doing now is this is this is the true knockback, fallback. Everybody's going to be lagging right here. So we're just in a deuce front. Any online tight end, we're going to run a pit stunt, which would be, I think that's the pony stunt in the Saban vernacular. Um, I call it pit because it's a pirate, but it's a it's a it's a friction pirate. It's a heavy pirate. It's not. So you call it you call it that. Um, and it's away from the running back. So again, wherever the running back is, where is everybody? Where's the center most likely going to go in this? The center's most likely going to go to the left. So where is everybody ending up? They're lagging. So you lag inside and you close the B gap opposite the running back. Look, close the B gap opposite the running back. And then this is just we're closing the B gap to the passing strength because it keeps our nickel again out of the fit uh, as much as possible. He doesn't have to fold all the way back in uh, to into a, a, a B gap. And then finally, we have what's called pirates. So we're going to set the away from the running back. OK, we're going to reduce away from the running back. So this is where we get our pit stunt. That's why you call it pirates. So again, that's just kind of the word association. But all of these, again, you could run all four of these in a game, and you're not really doing, not really doing anything different. I, um, a deuce front, I think, is and really the only one that you you have to kind of do is with this nose. He has to get to a face technique because you're just trying to because you're closing this a gap, so he's got to close the b gap. Um, so again, you're not reinventing the wheel. Um, and so if I'm an odd front team and I want to start doing, um, I want to start kind of experimenting. I need, maybe I have two edge rushers. Uh, maybe I have a young kid that he's really good at rushing the, rushing the passer. Um, and so like, how can I protect that kid? How can I, um, how can I get these even fronts, uh, but odd spacing, or if I want to be odd spacing, but I want to give an even presentation. You haven't changed. If you are a tight front team and you are A to C, you have not changed anything that you're doing here uh, in terms of run fit action. You can still spill overlap, which a lot of these guys do. So you can still spill overlap uh, because you got your you're in 30s. You know, there's only a few times where you need a bump the backers out uh, to 40 tens, just like this one would be an instance one, just because you want to, you know, you're reducing this quickly. So he just needs to push over. Otherwise you should be relatively fine. Any questions about the reduction fronts? No, sir. So we'll yeah, say so thank you to coach bald and thank you to coach Tatum for joining us today. They love you, Cody, everything <laughs> that you do. So man, I appreciate you. Yeah, I appreciate it. And again, like what I'm trying to do is like I'm trying to distill as much of this stuff and, and to make it as simple so that, so that you can take this back and you can kind of chew on it and you can play with it and see if it fits or not. Um, I think as a G front team, why, you know, the Angels and the Braves type stuff, that's easy. Uh, this, I think, too, if you're an odd front team like the Dodgers is getting in a do like getting in a deuce front or a heads front, everybody lags. Your interior guys know how to lag anyway. And then all you're doing is just teaching a heavy technique. So I don't think that there's anything, anything uh, different. So the next thing that I've really noticed uh, and I wrote about it uh, just recently. I wrote about the mint three high. I can't believe nobody talked about it. Uh, uh, Georgia came out and ran a three high system, an actual three high system, not their X front stuff, not their five across stuff that we kind of all know that they run on their um, on their third down stuff. This was a three high system. Um, and in fact, I found out that this had been in the playbook uh, pre COVID and then just never it never got they never got to it. Um, and I had talked to some stuff, some people on the staff and they had, especially in 2018, when Iowa State really came in and everybody was like, oh man, Iowa State's really kicking it. Uh, it's kind of, Gundy called it the air raid killer. Uh, every, it kind of popularized about five years ago. Now you see it at, uh, in college, it's kind of become uh, the typical defense for a lot of these hybrid teams. Uh, you see it now at the high school level. I think if you don't see a three high team on your, in your, on your schedule, um, 
you're either running like the wing T or you're running uh, something else. But if you are running any kind of like the NCAA Y off or a, a spread offense, you're seeing a three high defense. Now, going back to the reduction fronts, we now understand kind of we need to as defenses we need to be able to be multiple if offenses are going to be multiple i need to be multiple as well static static alignments on defense are going to get you beat more times than not unless you just got dudes and if you got dudes then you're going to win anyway so it doesn't really matter uh so how can i kind of go back and forth on some of these seasons this is where we get these frankenstein defenses so for instance georgia is running their mint package but they're running it from a three high alignment. Ohio State, they, you know, Jim Knowles goes to Ohio State. They have been forever a four three cover one defense. They have four three defensive defensive front, and they have good ones. Why would he go away from that? But how can he install his three high system, his hybrid defense into a four down front? This is where we get these Frankenstein defenses. So in a really, just conceptually, let's think about this. And, and I thought TCU did a really good job, except for they ran an under front. They walked this wheel down and they pushed everybody over here. So what you can get, how can I get to three high to a, to a four, two, five? And most odd stat coaches already know this. Anybody that runs a three, four, or, you know, runs a, a three high and wants to get to a four, two, five knows that the, all they got to do is either walk a mic down or bring their Sam down, and now we're into now we're already into a four two five. Uh, we're just taking that Joker safety, the middle safety. We're putting them in here. Um, in fact, it's really interesting to see the evolution of um, Iowa State. Iowa State is really a quarters team, and I think everybody began thinking, "Oh, this is just tight front Tampa too." And really, they only ran tight front against the empty. They never really ran a, a, a tight front against a regular offense. Um, so you get kind of you always had a hard edge somewhere uh, here. All they had to do, like, for instance, TCU, if I'm an Oki from I call Oki or an under team and I have a five, a zero and a, and a four eye. All I got to do is walk the wheel down, bump the mic over. The same linebacker just stays right on top. And I'm in a four two. I'm in a five, four two five under front defense. Um, all I got to do is bring that Joker safety. He's already kind of a nickel guy anyway. I just bring him down. Uh, and so now I'm in a four, two, five, but I'm running my three high alignments. And still, even now you could get in, you could get in, you get these guys, you could walk him up. You could put him on the back. It, you can move these guys, however you want to do it. You can get these guys in thirties and then he can play. This is what, and so this is what kind of Knowles does. He plays the wall two position. He's playing in a trap corner. He's deep half. Your nickel now is the, he's the three fit or he's the, he's the pole runner. So you see, I call this sticks because everybody's kind of playing around the sticks. Um, and, and all you're doing is running four down Tampa. In fact, if you want to watch a great film on this, it, go back and watch how uh, Wyoming played Texas this year. Wyoming had been a cover one team all year, and then they played Texas, and they came out in a four down Tampa. They used a four down front to kind of mess with Texas's wide zone and inside zone schemes. And then they ran that Tampa because a lot of what a lot of what Texas does is it's 12 personnel uh, play action with two man routes. Well, if I can flood the zone, but then I can plug these I can plug these gaps up here because that's the other thing, too. What's the problem with Tampa? Problem with Tampa is your Mike linebacker is in constant conflict, right? He's got to fit, but then he's also got to run the pole. Well, if I put a DB in the pole, now these guys can slow it down. I'm not necessarily worried about the, the seams as much right now. Uh, so now I can play, I can play this four down Tampa. Here's what Georgia did. I thought it was really clever and it kind of, and I'll kind of give you the history of why I think it's really clever. So their money backer or their Mac, it doesn't matter. It, it could be whoever they want to put out there. Um, Iowa state a couple years ago started putting a big linebacker out in the Sam linebacker spot instead of putting a hybrid. Why did they do that? One, it deters screens. You're telling me this little slot right here is going to go block a 235 pound linebacker? Probably not going to happen on a consistent basis. Okay. The other thing too was you're getting what we call what we see like power slots, right? These big physical receivers. Well, here's a big physical uh, a linebacker who can tackle him in space. 
Um, so what all they did was they just bumped out their their mint front. So he's a C gap fitter, he's an A gap fitter, but instead of now them being A to C, he is automatically in the C. He's kind of A to C, so his fit doesn't change, and then he's kind of a lag fit. Now, typically in a three down, you're gonna have this guy three fit. So wherever he goes, he's gonna fit the outside shoulder. So if he stays front side, I fit the outside shoulder. He goes across. I fit the outside shoulder. That's probably if I had any critique, which again, I'm not critiquing uh, Kirby Smart or, or or Schumann. I'm just saying if they're and again, this is this is something that they probably only ran against Tennessee. But having more of a defined fit off of that guy is probably going to get you. But then again, that opens up yourself for manipulation. I've got to teach that. I've got to do it all over. But if you are a three high defense this is an easy way to get into a mint package and still play this kind of tower defense in fact i talked to a coach today that he was kind of experimenting with this in in the spring uh but with his two inside backers and this actually fit really well with what they were trying to do he had a lot of success with it so i think that this is something uh these frankenstein defenses are things that you're going to start seeing guys get really creative but I mean, because think about it, and I think these two are great examples. Well, that's why I use Ohio State and Georgia. Okay, and and again, we are anch- We all have anchoring biases. Like I am anchored because into the four two five because I work for Phil Bennett. I'm a big believer in it. I'm a big believer in the Jimmy Johnson quarter system. I, be- I that's where I'm anchored in as a young coach. But I've also been to other places. I was mostly an odd front coach when I was when when I was at the high school because that's the kids that we have. Um, and then being a quarters guy and looking at it now, looking, being able to look back and say, OK, what are some things that I would do different? Like like having targeted coverages. I think these reduction fronts are an easy install for for e- whether you are an odd front team or an even front team to be able to, to flip how you do it. Because when because here's the other thing, if you ask any offense coordinator in the country, and you say, draw what your you know draw me up uh your favorite play against your favorite defense they're going to run some sort of a zone against a four down front because it's just easy it's just the easiest way that you can get it in it's clearly defined everything's really good okay um but if i can give you that presentation but i'm really fitting it odd now you have no idea what we're doing why are those b gaps getting close why are they lagging behind why are they doing this why is what we perceive to be there not there um, and it's a, it's and I get nice edge pass rushers. Um, so going through this again, I think that this is an interesting alignment. They didn't change anything other than taking that nickel, putting him over the tight end, and then just having him kind of lag fit behind it. And that's it. So how I thought that they did a really good job instead of running uh mint four, they just ran mint three high and were still able to run uh all their stuff out of it. Any questions about that? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, this is something, again, going back to kind of talking with Fangio, is, you know, there is nothing new in football. It's just we live in a different time, a different place, and we have have all have different experiences. The ecosystem that you live in is di- way different than the ecosystem that I live in at DFW. Um, and this goes for our conferences in college even divisions in the NFL, all the way down to high school. Um, So most odd stack guys know bear and they just, oh yeah, this is, we just walk our guys up. We have one guy in the back and we kind of mess with the five DBs in the secondary. So this is nothing new. I think what, again, going back to it, we're seeing it in a different way being played in the NFL. We're seeing a five-man front with a single backer, but we're getting two high coverages out of it. We're still playing from a two high alignment. We're playing with a true nickel. Uh, we're, and so what we're doing is we are telling you we are clogging all of your gaps. We're taking away any outlet on outside of the box. I'm still going to funnel the running back into the A-gap, but I'm going to play my split field coverage behind it. And I think, again, that's where – the Fangio system is a little bit different in that he is willing, he, him, and especially like Brandon Staley, Raheem Morris with the, with the, with the, uh, the Rams, uh, Georgia actually ran uh, kind of some of this stuff, this five, one stuff uh, against Tennessee a couple years ago. So you're starting to see more and more of these defenses really start messing around with some of these five, one, 
front. So again, all this is, this is weak Eagle. Like most people already know what strong Eagle or an Eagle defense is, or, you know, they already have this in there. Uh, you are a, uh, maybe your base three, four that you start out in camp is from, you know, uh, a tough alignment or a four, a four Oh four. Maybe you're a tight front base. So all your guys are in four eyes and, and you have a lag nose. All this is doing is it's clearly defining. Anytime you run Eagle, you are clearly defining the fits for your backer. And so we have, we have an over alignment and then we have an eat, but Hey, guess what? We either walked up the wheel linebacker or now I've got, let's say I've got a, uh, I've got a really good edge rusher. I've got two of them. I got two outside linebackers um, and maybe I'm a, I'm a guy short at linebacker, right? I've got these two hybrid outside linebackers. I'm a guy short at linebacker. Maybe I'm looking in and I'm like, man, I really only have one linebacker. I really trust playing on the field, but I have these five DBs that I trust and I've got two of these edge guys, or maybe I've got one and I've got a really talented defensive end, which is exactly what the Broncos did um, with Jones. Um, So all you're getting here is look, I'm cutting off. If this is zone, okay, and so I know it's the NFL, so it's under center, but let's just say that this is pistol or this is gun. We're going to get some sort of split zone action, right? Well, I've cut off all these gaps. The it, it, Even if they run split zone, this thing is going to have to press front side. So it goes back all the way back to our reduction fronts of where we are actually dictating where the ball is going to hit, which, again, defense is so reactionary. If I can dictate anything on defense i'm going to do it and so that's where i think these have become really popularized and two this looks really weird right this linebacker is pushed on top of this tight end he's in charge of the a gap but again we just talked about it now derrick henry doesn't mind running in the a gap so you got to be careful when you play the titans but most high school running backs again they don't want to hit in the a gaps they want this thing to go off tackle or they want to go outside so i'm i'm inviting them to run where they don't want to run. So you're playing, again, you're playing the law of averages. I know if they go zone, he's probably not going to hit in the A-gap. I can all, And if he does, I'm going to compress this thing down. I've got a nose that's going to press the center, so hopefully we can close that A-gap down, and it's either going to roll to a defensive end and a safety coming down, or it's going to go out the front door to a linebacker and an edge blocker that are that, and an edge rusher that's right here. So how do I play? too high out of it well you can give these again these are these are your this is what you would really call most people call reductions right is that i'm going to give a call and i'm liz means i'm going to activate the left edge and then everybody goes away from the call all i've gotten into guys is all this is an overfront look i'm back into the 425 my wheel linebacker is just either going to play grab me with the back or he's going to play a quarter hook technique and i'm playing quarters over here here's our targeted coverage we're rotating this is eight in fangio terms meaning that we're going to rotate the coverage or we're going to run cover two to nickel so again i haven't done anything so what if i'm uh for and and a lot of four two five teams have done this too like i'm going to walk the guy i just walk the wheel down like i call it walk we just walk the wheel down okay uh and and he gets into an eat alignment so all we are again we're we're in weak eagle. We look like this. If we walk the wheel line, linebacker down in, in, in our four two five, this this is what we would look like. Okay, so I think again, not necessarily seeing it as well. I got to have two edges to play that, um, or maybe you have a kind of a a plugger at Mike, or you've got a a really good blitzing inside linebacker. Why would you not let him go ahead and just walk down there and now engage him automatically? Uh, so you've got the Sam. And, and this is how I think it's, again, this is easy. Sam eight, and then he calls it penny whiskey, which is just the will. So again, now all we're doing, if you look at this, we're getting into an underfront. Okay, we've got a five, we've got a shade, we got a three, and we got an edge, edge rusher. Now they like to drop it down, but I've also seen, depending on the formation, I've also seen this being run from a two high shell. So it's all depending on, do the, does the back stay in, does the back go out? And then again, this is probably the most typical way that you that if I'm an odd stack team, everybody's like, yeah, this is it. This is my Lou and my Rob, and they just walk down, and the mic stays in the middle, and now we've got our bear one, right? I mean, I think bear one, everybody kind of knows that, but kind of detaching yourself from again anchor what you're anchored in, and being like, okay, you know, we've really kind of been maybe you're an odd stack team, 
and you play quarters. Well, what are some different ways that I can take best practices, things that guys are doing at the top level, and how can I repurpose them into giving me, again, what we have done here is we've given the offense another defensive formation that they have to work. We've given them a couple other pressures that they have to work. Now we have to, I mean, think about it. If this was just your penny package, you would probably be just fine. If these were the three calls that you ran in your penny package, you would be just fine. And, and you wouldn't have to do, you're, you're only working three things. And really all that, this is just super easy because you can just put, you know, all you got to do is, especially if you're an odd stack team or an odd front team, is that the guy here is either a linebacker um, or he's he's an outside linebacker. He's already working coverage. So, you know, if and two, even if you do use an outside linebacker, let's say you have two jacks you, and I'm like, man, we got two jacks. I got to find a way to get them on the field. My two jacks are better than the two linebackers that I got. I've got one linebacker that I trust. Well, you're already working coverage with these guys anyway. These guys aren't – you're not asking these guys to carry tight ends vertical. You're, you're asking them literally to drop to a spot, get in front of a snag route, uh, read the quarterback, get their hands up. Uh, so, again, if you, did, if you did this and you just worked these three calls, then you're giving them three different looks – and that's another formation that the defense has to work. So that I think the penny is another one that that I think is being being talked about a lot more. I mean, and, and this has been around at the NFL level now for really since 2020. Uh, but it, I think it's starting to kind of really trick. Start, I'm starting to see it trickle down to the to the college level, and and a lot of people are a little bit more interested in it uh, than they were in the, in the past. Yeah, right on, man. All right, last one, and this is. This is my baby. I, I, when I left Baylor and I started coaching at the high school level, we couldn't run cover one. We didn't have the guys. And so what I devised was we got to find a way that I can play half field zones. I got to be able to play quarters on one side and I got to be able to play man to the blitz side. Um, and so again, and I'm not saying I invented this at all. This is again, it's, 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 I always love it when, we all have we all have similar problems and but how we get to the answers to those problems i always love it when a lot of guys come together and they're like oh yeah we've been doing this for a long time and it's like we haven't talked um and so i think that half field zones uh, are becoming more and more popularized in fact georgia was a half field zone quarters team last year that's i mean they were a five, they had become a five man pressure team probably a couple years ago uh, but how they didn't want you don't want to run fire zones. I think that's the other thing, too, is that if you can play cover one, like Saban says, it's best coverage in ball. I mean, I agree, too. If you have five DBs, like when I was at Horn, I had five Division One DBs. We played a lot of cover one. Why would we not? Uh, and so uh, but maybe you've been in a situation where I've been when I was at Lovejoy. We couldn't really play man coverage when I went to Midlothian. We could, but I didn't really want the linebackers in man coverage. So we had to find ways to play zone. Uh, and then when I went to Horn, I had five division one, I had five division one athletes. We played man free. Um, so how do you fix, how do you fix that problem? And that's where you get these half field zones. In fact, I've had a, I, I have a coach tube on a, you, if you go to massquarters.com, you click on the archive, it's at the top. I've had, I think I made that. Oh, probably uh, four years ago, three or four years ago, that's been up there. Then it's funny because like when I I, ha I had some, some buddies on the Georgia staff talking to them about Big 12s, they didn't like it versus FIB. It gave them problems. How do you do it? But then you go once everybody, and again, football cyclical, it used to be you always wanted your nickel to the passing stream. Then it went to you want your nickel to the field. Now we're kind of back to nickel to the passing strength. And then how do you mitigate that without with motion? Um, so now that we're kind of back to nickel to the passing strength, big 12s aren't that big of a deal for, for Georgia because now they just can put, now they just put their nickel with the passing strength. And if they motion, they just roll with it. Um, so this is probably, if you watch the national championship last year, you saw Switzer, which is what they call it. You saw Switzer probably like, five or six times. In fact, it was their number one pressure that they ran against TCU. Uh, and all it is, is a, it's a, 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 a Tom stunt or, or a, a, um, a, a, a TN or a ton stunt inside. Uh, some people call it torch. Uh, and then you have kind of, uh, you know, you just have a C gap blitz. They call it, they call it Charlie. Uh, and then, so well, how do you break this down? Well, you have a man side 
you have a zone side. Um, we at Midlothian, if we had any kind of edge pressure, we half field zoned it. If you send your mic, you still have a cover down and you still have a cover down. So like your, your star and your money are still overhangs technically. So you can actually, we call it storm. So we could play, we could play a trap two on both sides or we could play squat, squat cover two. We could still have our, our triangles, uh, and just kind of, if we sent the mic. So, uh, it, that's kind of the one you can play coverage kind of like, a a four under two deep or however you want to play it. Maybe you play quarters with, uh, with these two, you know, the, the money and the, the nickel playing more of like an eyes technique, uh, kind of like a hot quarters look, but you're not, you're not running a six man pressure, but this is an easy way of doing it. Corner knows he's man free safety knows he's man. So if they do throw, so, and quarterbacks always talk about like, Oh, I love throwing into a blitz. Well, if they're going to throw into the blitz, they're throwing into man coverage. So these DBs are already right there. So, you know, the ball's coming out quick. So you're not getting these elongated routes from, from the, from the man side to the zone side. We're just playing our, our typical zone. So it, let's say the running back's over here. He's not stacked. Let's say the running back's over here. We've got our four over three. We haven't changed. You can run bracket. This says bracket because it's from the playbook. You could you can run quarters. You can run palms. You could run any kind of coverage that you want on this side. So then I kind of was like, okay, well, how did I structure this in my playbook? What does this look like in my playbook? So I got, I got two five-man pressures that I think are pretty popular. I call this Baker. Uh, it's called Aranda calls it spike. I think the Georgia guys call it Buddha. All we're doing uh, is playing half field zone. So we're playing our zone over here and then we are playing man here. Well, what if the tight ends over here? Okay. Well, if he goes vertical, the backside safety is going to take him. If he's over here, the backside safety is going to take him. So he's got the tight end. If he blocks, he doesn't have a man he can close the post. So you're buying him back into the post uh, or you can buy him over uh, to the X receiver side. I call this golf. All this is, is a simple plug blitz. All we're doing, whoever has, whoever is to the back is going to peel with the back. Whoever uh, is away from the back is automatically engaged. Um, if he were to go across, we're going to share rush it with the end, with the end in the will, because again, he's the three drop or he's, he's, he's on the push alert. If the, if the back was over here. So over here, you know, again, we're playing half field zone. We're sending the mic, but we're also sending the will. And so, because if you're like, well, coach, you said that if you send the mic, you don't have to. Well, you could technically play some sort of a zone over here if you want to. But remember, we're sending the will. It's a five man, this is kind of a, a five man pressure. And so now he's gone out of it. We have our man, we have our zone. Um, I think I've had a lot of people ask me about the half field zone stuff. Um, I think that it's, uh, I think to me, it's it's kind of the the best of both worlds if you don't have if you don't have a um, kind of a guy uh, or or a team that you really trust playing a lot of man. So these are kind of the things that I'm seeing more and more talked about frequently. Again, we talked about targeted coverages. It's the old school cover six, but I've kind of nuanced it. Now we're actually either rotating to the nickel, rotating away. We talked about reduction fronts, which is being able to get into an even front, but play odd spacing. And if you're a creeper sim based team, you're already running odd, odd spacing through blitzes. Uh, so if you're a four down team, but you like some of these, these, cre these uh, creepers and sims that you're seeing at the college level and the NFL level, you're already running odd spacing anyway. So all this is doing is you're just not blitzing. Um, we talked about Frankenstein defenses, taking three high, taking other uh, other ways of playing things and then and then kind of interjecting it into your defense. We talked about the penny front, which is essentially putting creating man blocking up front, funneling everything into the A gap, but then being able to play quarters uh, or cover three behind it. And then half field zones is kind of the last thing that we talked about. Man, you're so legit. And uh, I mean, it's just so much information that people can use and. Man, I appreciate you coming on. Coach Tatum's got a got a comment. It's good to have uh, Troy Taylor, the championship football coaches clinic back. Yeah, Coach Ball, thank you for tuning in. Uh, so, Cody, uh, what's up with you and you know your website, Match Quarters, and how can people get in touch with you or, or um, subscribe? 
Yeah. So I fa- in fact, I just, I just got done uh, this past, this past couple of weeks working with Substack, moving everything over to one spot. It used to be kind of annoying. You go to matchquarters.com. It's one thing. Then you go to Substack. It's another. Everything now is completely housed on matchquarters.com. So if you type in matchquarters.com, it's going to go to one site. It has everything in there. I redid the template shop too. So it's a, a lot easier. I know a lot of people were having anytime they were multiple download their home problems. I've made everybody's life a lot easier. Um, so all of this stuff that we talked about, I've written about. So if you need resources on it, there's one place for that. And that's matchquarters.com. Go to the archive, use the search tool within Substack on my site to find any of this. I mean, for instance, I'm in, I had a coach today. He's like, I'm interested in kind of learning more about the George defense, but there's so much out there. Uh, so I'm like, look, literally go there, type in Georgia and all the Georgia, anything that has Georgia in it is going to be is going to be on there. Um, if you're interested in hot pressures, right, because tomorrow I'm going to drop an article on the Vikings defense. I think what the what Brian Flores is doing, I think that's if there's one thing that we didn't talk about uh, that probably more people will talk about this offseason is what Brian Flores is doing with his five and six man fronts, but playing hot coverage behind it. Uh, but it's nuanced, right? It's, it's, it's Narduzzi, but I think, it, I think it's the one thing at the NFL level that you can't argue with me doesn't translate to the high school level. Um, I think that you can be a, they, you know, I think that you can do some of these hot pressures on early downs when you know you're getting the run and being able to kind of mitigate some of this play action stuff off of it. Uh, because a lot of times on first down, they're not running play action and trying to throw a five yard hitch. They're running deep crosses. They're running deeper routes to, uh, towards the sticks to try and get those big chunk plays off the run game. Uh, so if you're interested in that stuff, that's on there. Um, I'm draw- What I'm doing, too, is I'm going through YouTube. Match Quarters has a YouTube. Uh, there's tons of I mean, there's a, I think I've got like 300 something videos over there, um, all from one minute to 20 minutes. So I'm moving a lot of my long form stuff and putting it in the clinic section um, over on match quarter. So it, it's completely worth the archive alone. I feel like, and from what I've heard from coaches, the archive alone at matchquarters.com is worth, uh, worth a, a monthly subscription or a yearly subscription, just because the, you, there's no way you can read that in one day and there's a volume of things. So anything you get interested in, it's over there. So thank you for letting me have this platform and talk to you about Divas, man. I'm a nerd, as you can tell. Uh, so anytime I can nerd out on ball, especially with you, Coach, it's, it's all good. Yeah, thank you, Cody. I'm going to press end here, and we'll stay on and talk for a little bit. But thank you, my friend. You're the best. Appreciate it.